as I mentioned, there's a lot of standards in the wireless network security arena. And I wanted to explain a few of these to you, not in extraordinarily depth, because we could probably spend several days talking about a couple of these, but enough depth so you understand the weak spots, you understand the exploit potential of these, and it will make your attacks certainly a lot easier and your profiling a lot quicker. First, open wireless networking. Open wireless networking is just what it sounds like. It means any client can connect. Generally speaking, any client can access data and can use the internet, can use the backend network, whatever it might be. This is common really not in any enterprise or even in most homes, but it is common in place like a coffee shop or a restaurant or an airport lounge, that kind of thing. Oftentimes those will actually have a portal based authentication on the back end, but that's pretty weak security as well. You'll see in a moment how that actually works. The first big network standard for wireless security was WEP or the wired equivalent privacy. WEP was designed specifically to be roughly equivalent with wired networking, hence the name. But it had a lot of flaws, most notably one flaw that allows pretty quick, pretty easy brute force attacks. So not long ago, a few years ago, Wi-Fi Protected Access, WPA, and its successor, WPA2, came around. WPA and WPA2 were actually designed to be backwards compatible with most devices that implemented WEP. WPA2 explicitly was backwards compatible with WPA devices. So most of the devices, in fact, most of the devices for the last six or seven years that have been manufactured for Wi-Fi use will support all of these standards. Some older devices, 2005 and before, may require either a firmware update or they may not work with the newer security standards. So sometimes I hear administrators complain that my devices are not new enough to use WPA2. Most of the time they actually are. If the devices have been made in the last five or six years, they're probably going to work just fine with WPA and WPA2. Because WPA and WPA2, among other things, extended the, the password size and extended the, the cryptographic keys that are used behind it for data protection, the standards wanted to make it easier for home users and small business users to configure Wi-Fi with similar kinds of high-end security. So they came up with a standard for Wi-Fi protected setup, or WPS, which if you've ever looked at an access point, a wireless access point, you've seen a button on the front for setup or a button on the side for setup. That button enables Wi-Fi protected setup. Essentially, it enables a, an easy, quick little pin that you can establish on both sides of the wireless network that enables a, a very strong password on the back end without the user having to remember it and type it in or an administrator to deploy it. So it makes security a little bit more convenient at the expense of you get to push a button and bypass all security almost. On the other hand, we've got a couple of, of bits of technology for Wi-Fi that have been around for quite a while. One standard is the service set identifier or SSID. This is most typically the network name you see when you uh, are running Windows and you have a wire wireless network card. It comes up with a list of wireless networks. Those are usually SSIDs. And SSIDs are kind of a friendly name for the network, make it easier for the user to figure out which network to connect to, and make it easier for the, an administrator to configure the wireless client. Not terribly long ago, a lot of administrators thought to themselves, well, if I disable the SSID from being broadcast, which means clients that have Windows or, or any operating system, really, they won't see it pop up on their list, so they'll never connect to it. Well. That doesn't really work because the SSID is not necessarily a secret and it doesn't really stop anything from happening. No wireless attacker worth their salt is going to worry about whether an SSID is being broadcast or not. In fact, all of the attack tools that you're going to see just ignore the fact that SSID is either broadcast or not broadcast. Just makes it a touch harder for legitimate users to connect. That's really about all that does basing security on SSID broadcast disable. Similarly, media access control authentication, just like on a wired network, wireless clients have MAC associated, a MAC number associated with their uh, network device. Well, that's great because it helps the network identify which hosts are which hosts and route the traffic appropriately. 
And also, just like on the Wired Network, you can spoof MAC addresses in an incredibly easy fashion. In fact, there's command lines for it, there's automatic tools for it, there's scripts for it, it's in the interface in Windows. MAC authentication is a trivial, trivial operation. Maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was a little harder because you might have had to have gone into the BIOS uh, or into a configuration setting that was not readily available. But just like Wired today, wireless MAC authentication is super easy to spoof. And in fact, in most hotels and airports and things like that, they're controlling the access to the network by MAC ID. So they assume that clients will not change their MAC ID. And an attacker that does change their MAC ID to one that looks like it's already authenticated is pretty much on the network in most cases. Finally, 8021X, port and portal-based authentication. This is a little bit more hardcore of a wireless network security standard, and this is a pretty, pretty deep piece of, of security technology. It's harder to get around this type of wireless network security because what happens is clients have to prove their identity. They have to provide authentication and, auth and authorization information to the wireless network, which then checks on a back-end server, either a radius server or a di diameter server, to find out is this client authorized to be on the wireless network and are they providing the proper credentials. That's fantastic for an administrator. It's also a nightmare to set up, and most administrators, most networks don't actually use 8021X at all just because of the complexity. It uh, oftentimes requires PKI or it requires some type of enrollment. It's actually really, really difficult to do. Uh, then again, as an administrator, if I was setting up a wireless network, this would be the way I would do it because it's going to protect against a variety of attacks.